Welcome everybody. I am TD. I'm going to be a chair for today's session. Um, I would like to introduce the panel led by Gregory Mala on Meet and Open Street Mapper. Thank you. Hello. So I should probably explain if you're looking at your booklet. I'm not Paul. I'm not talking on an overview of map serving architecture. Um, he couldn't quite get details of it sorted, but he is here at the conference if you want to go and talk to him. Um, so filling in with this isn't very well planned. I want to invite up my friends to come and join me on the seats. And we're going to have a quite relaxed um, kind of session here. Um, it's not very well planned, but this is um, meet an open street mapper. Um, so get comfortable. I'm going to ask these guys. I know them a little bit, but we're going to get to know them. Similar to doing the coffee breaks, you might want to talk to people and ask them questions. Um, we've all got involved in the project in different ways. Um, so we have here uh, Tishalf. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm uh, Tishalf, also known as Ribbon. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, and yeah, we have Yorike. Yeah, Yorike. Um, I'm working for MSF, Médecins Sans Frontières, um, as Missing Maps Coordinator, and I'm also an OpenStreetMap Belgium lady. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Dermot. My mapping ID is Macro Ski. I'm from Dublin in Ireland. Used to be on the OSMF board, and I'm um, just keep taking it easy. I'm Chris. I in, live in Scotland, and I tend to do a lot of mapping there. Um, my OSM username is also Chris Fleming, so I kind of kept it all very simple. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll think of some questions as I go along. Chris still has a microphone. Um, so I've, I've known you probably the longest. Um, so do you want to say what year you first heard about OpenStreetMap and how you heard about it? So I've been on OpenStreetMap for a very long time. Um, I think it was... Many years ago, my parents were on a bed and breakfast, and I was trying to create a map for their website. And I was kind of just looking for map data, basically. I was trying to geocode local locations, and I thought there must be some source of this. Um, and I think I discovered OpenStreetMap. I think at that stage, it was, there was no actual map on the website. It was just white dots. But I kind of thought, oh, there's something interesting in this, and kind of, I'm still here. So there we go. Cool, exciting. Um, I, should, I was also going to explain at the start that um, I've decided there's no wrong questions here, guys, so that you can relax. If, if you ever say, if, if maybe there's no wrong answers, um, but if you did say you copy everything from Google Maps, we'll be kind and, and maybe later I'll explain why that isn't a good idea. <laughs> um, you know, but, and, and that's all we could joke about. But, but we're all learning in different ways. Um, also, if you guys don't want to answer a question, that's fine. Just say uh, next question, please, and I'll probably ask someone else something different. Um, particularly as, yeah, I, I don't know what your answers are for everything, and, and maybe it's not appropriate. And maybe you just don't know the answer. Um, so, also, Chris, so what you did you say, 2009? Six. Six. Oh, wow. That's yeah, early, a long time. It? It was a, yeah, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> and, and you were very involved, um, and I feel you've recently come back to OpenStreetMap. Well, I, I think it probably varies. So I'm, I used to go to a lot of the very early state of the maps, and I think it's kind of a, maybe it's a common pattern is you then have children, and suddenly all my time is taken up by looking after small people. Um, you can take the mapping sometimes, but they've got quite a short t attention span. So actually, babies were great because someone was awake, you put them in a sling, you go for a walk, you go down that road, you kind of go exploring, it was fine, but once they've got, kind of got their own opinions where they want to go, they're not always so interested in going down that street that just to try and find out a bit of information about what house is down there. So that kind of, it's probably just slowed down the amount of mapping I'm doing and the involvement. I kind of still stay relatively involved with the local community. We've kind of got a good group of local mappers and we try and meet up regularly-ish, kind of either every month or every kind of couple of months, so I kind of just try and encourage people more than doing mapping, because actually it, it occurred to me quite early on that if I was going to map the city I live in, um, I just didn't have time, so actually the best way of using my time was to actually try and tell other people about it. Um, and, you know, I think the first talk I did, I recruited a guy, and he goes by the username of Central America, and he actually mapped a lot of Edinburgh. He's done 
absolutely bucket loads of mapping. I think lots of people would have seen his username, so actually that was much more useful for me to go and do a talk and tell people about it. It's probably something always to bear in mind, actually, is rather than trying to do all the work yourself, if you can kind of get three or four other people, then that, that's actually a really good, good use of time. So that would probably be my top tip, actually, for getting, getting your city map, is to, to try and get, get other people involved. Yeah. Cool, exciting. Um, let's pass it on to Dermot. So Chris was, first of all, with your parents, Bim, but he got you interested, Dermot, maybe similar? How did you hear about OpenStreetMap? So, I mean, in my OpenStreetMap story, on the one hand, I started just a little bit later, uh, later than Chris did, but on the other hand, my OpenStreetMap story goes right back to the year 2000 before OpenStreetMap itself existed, because I think, like quite a lot of people in the early OpenStreetMap community, um, I came up with the idea of OpenStreetMap myself, but then then never never did anything about it. Um, or at least, came, I think many people came up with aspects of the idea of OpenStreetMap. So in, in, in my um, situation, that um, I had actually in the year 2000 just moved home to Ireland from Germany of all places. I lived in Munich for a number of years. And with me I took um, a, a car that I'd bought, which had a snazzy new um, navigation system of the kind that was just becoming popular and available. Um, and of course I got home, I had no maps, but uh, so everywhere I drove I had a little marker moving around on the screen, knowing where I was, but not being prepared to actually record that such that it could reuse it. So it was very easy from that standpoint to say, wouldn't it be good if I could just remember where I've been and use that as a kind of a crude map, which of course is very much the genesis of, of, of OpenStreetMap. So fast forward to the year 2007 and I accidentally discovered the existence. Every so often I would Google to see if anyone had produced street level mapping, digital mapping of Ireland, and somehow uh, my Google search found a story about the Isle of Wight mapping party, which was one of, I think probably, I don't know that it was the, the first mapping party, but it was the first systematic attempt to, to map a, a defined region, um, the, the Isle of Wight uh, off the south coast of England. Um, so once I discovered that it existed, that was basically it, I was hooked. And, um, and let's hear from Jericho, when, how did you get involved and uh, how did you hear about OpenStreetMap? Uh, I heard about OpenStreetMap through my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, there's something good about him then. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and since then, I'm I'm here. Uh, I think that was like in the end of 2010. So he was uh, using the data for his job. Uh, he's here also. Uh, like one of the sponsors now <laughs> um, for his job and then I, he showed it to me and I basically I liked it. Um, I was also at that time doing uh, a summer job as a, as, a, as a post delivery on my bike going through the whole village basically. So I basically knew every, every house in our village, every number of, of every house in our village, <laughs> in the village, in the forest, because there's a forest with all the houses. So I was cycling basically every day through the whole village and I knew every every house. So that was just easy to map. So I was just map the house, map the map the number and, <laughs> and go around. And then my two brothers, I, yeah, this was nice to do. So my two brothers were started also helping out. Um, and, and yeah, we basically mapped the whole village <laughs> like this, which was pretty fun. Um, and then also I got to hear about the whole uh, humanitarian uh, part of, of the thing. Not necessarily about, um, about the whole disaster mapping, but more about the, 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 the community projects uh, as Map Kibera. Um, so really mapping with local, local citizens, their local environments, and that really got inspired me. Um, and I basically it got inspired me, but I didn't start mapping immediately because I was like curious how that could influence uh, people's life. Is it actually, was it actually a good thing to do? Was it not a good thing to do? Um, so I, I studied social sciences uh, and I was interested in the whole participatory processes and citizens doing, putting their own uh, yeah, houses on the map and so on. Um, and I started questioning this, like, how, why would you do this in a slum? Is this actually good? Is this not good? And then I had the opportunity to go for my studies to, to Bangladesh. And I uh, had the chance to do a little research for my master's uh, in, uh, in one of the slums of Bangladesh, where I basically asked this question. I showed a map um, and I asked this question um, to the people and, and they basically got me convinced 
um, yeah, if uh, yeah, mapping is nice, good, um, and we want to do it ourselves. And so as from them, I started to become more involved in the humanitarian uh, mapping and trying to reach out to local people to map uh, and, and to put their own places on the map, basically. Um, so that's how I kind of end up here in a more humanitarian role, which is different and sometimes challenging, but it's, uh, it's challenging and that's also nice. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> nice, nice. And uh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, when and how did you find out about OpenStreetMap? Uh, for me, it's, uh, it will be a more interesting one, I, I would rather say. Because I was not, uh, it was back in 2015, uh, early 2015. Uh, I, w I was supposed to help uh, Eureka and Pete over there in Bangladesh uh, with some translation and logistic uh, support. Uh, um, uh, as I, w I had been uh, uh, working with MSF uh, over there in Bangladesh uh, to uh, priorly uh, from MSF, I got to know that uh, two people are coming uh, from uh, uh, London MSF and uh, they are trying to map uh, some part of the uh, area in our city. So uh, I might uh, need to support them in a way. Uh, so afterwards, uh, when the, uh, any, uh, they came up and showed up and uh, having a mapathon being a mapathon or training been uh, designed for them uh, in an university, uh, I found out that uh, I, I would be more interested in mapping rather than uh, translating the whole thing up and supporting them in that way. Uh, and uh, uh, both was it, it was uh, one of the uh, one of the mention I, I, I can uh, remember still. Uh, Eureka was saying he, he's a lot more than a good mapper than than a translator. <laughs> so. <laughs> So it it was it, it was then I got involved in the process and uh, later on uh, what happened uh, my involvement with OSM is more of a uh, mixed journey I would rather say uh, I have been involved in the uh, humanitarian part of the mapping and at the same time uh, I have been uh, working uh, with. Uh, some of the uh, ride-sharing companies over there uh, supporting them with uh, navigational stuffs. Uh, uh, so, uh, though more more of the more of my efforts are going uh, with the humanitarian part and community building, I would rather say, because uh, right now uh, later on uh, I have been trying to put on the community and community has been uh, working a bit well. Right now, we do have uh, community uh, becoming organizations. We have uh, Bangladesh, Open Stream of Bangladesh Foundation being uh, recognized over there. Uh, so uh, this is more of the story uh, right now. And uh, on the humanitarian ground, uh, very recently I have been involved with uh, hot uh, board too. So. Uh, it, it has given me more opportunity to uh, work together in the uh, global scale, I would rather say. Huh. Interesting. So some very different ways you found out about OpenStreetMap. You've got kind of Chris involved with seeing things on a map, Dermot who kind of, you had the idea but you waited for someone else to do it, <laughs> Yuriki who your boyfriend told you about it, <laughs> and she, you, um, yeah, kind of, there was a job completely a bit unrelated, but then mapping's awesome, so you got involved. So, yeah. Um, so, I think there's lots of places we mapped. I kind of, I did think about using the computer, but we're not going to touch a computer, and we're going to imagine, if I could look at OpenStreetMap right now and search for a place, um, and we can change the map layer, the style, if you like, um, in your mind, um, so you'll all have to imagine this um, or look it up. I want you to tell me, where would you go to that you're proud of the map um, and then explain why? Um, I would uh, rather say uh, having, uh, right now, we, uh, with last two years effort, we, we have been, me and my team over there in Bangladesh has uh, put on uh, something like uh, 
nothing out there uh, to almost cover up uh, 30% of the whole country uh, in a way. This is one of the things uh, I, I feel proud of, even even uh, when I see uh, the community and the team has been uh, uh, contributing uh, in a bigger picture uh, in global scale. Uh, I have been uh, saying it a lot in a way. Uh, probably 20 guys from uh, Bangladesh community is right now in the top 50 contributors in uh, global missing maps and humanitarian open street map uh, uh, leaderboard out there so uh, it, it has been uh, it has been my proud part to uh, encourage this amount of contribution in a way and uh, having uh, my country's uh, uh, coverage uh, improving day by day in a way because uh, where I'm coming from, uh, it is more of a, uh, there has been a lot of disasters, uh, both uh, uh, because of the climate change and also uh, man-made, I would rather say. Uh, and also, uh, recently what we have done, we have tried to cover up the whole uh, Dhaka city in, in terms of road networks and stuff. So uh, that is one of the things I'm uh, very much proud of. I would be more proud of uh, uh, the whole thing, uh, I would say, the data uh, we, we can contribute in uh, ov overall uh, 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 need of uh, data over, over there in terms of my country itself. Okay, cool. So very much kind of a quite high level view of your country and stuff. And, and maybe going back to Chris and what you said about, um, well, no, just Chris said earlier about um, he's encouraged and helped other mappers. Um, and so you kind of count those as your contributions a bit, don't you? Uh, cool. You're ready. Where would you take us to? How much would you zoom in on the map? Uh, I would take you to uh, Bangui, um, at the, the capital of the Central African Republic. Uh, look it up. It's the, the, the heart of Africa, basically. Um, Bangui, that when, when, when I... So it was the first time in Africa to go there um, in 2012. Um, was there on, on the, with, a, with a little group of volunteers to basically on, on a mapping mission to try to outreach um, um, to organizations to learn them about uh, OpenStreetMap because nobody in the humanitarian world almost knew about uh, OpenStreetMap back then. Um, and so Bangui, there was nothing. There were just through three, four main axes of the city, uh, and there was nothing. And we basically just started mapping, 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 so remote, like remote, and also data collection on the ground. And we started mapping, mapping, mapping. Um, and like in, in two, three months, um, there were, yeah, there was, there was a decent map of the country. And one fact, which is also really nice, um, so on, of course on Google Maps there was also nothing, and I don't think there is still a lot. <laughs> but also the the border on Google Maps from the the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, was running right through, um, right through the through Bangui, the city. So it was right running through the capital of another country, um, and I still suspect Google from seeing our activity on OpenStreetMap that they saw like oh there is so much going on that they switched like a later the boundary to the correct to the correct side of the river basically <laughs> it's a suspicion but I still think <laughs> no I'm honestly I'm proud of this like we basically put the whole city on the map the a capital of a country which is just amazing and it also got used um, by a lot of humanitarian actors right afterwards because I was then basically uh, two months later that was a uh, the war basically started and, and a genocide basically started um, of people and um, it was just immediate action of, of humanitarian action, seeing from, okay, where is this data? And then they started calling us, the humanitarian organizations, where is this data, how can we use this? And was just, yeah, still proud of, I hope this contributed a little bit to the people who have been living there. So, yeah, so look it up. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring it a lot closer to home, uh, at least a lot closer to my home. Um, so in the northwest of Ireland um, is a county called Donegal. It's the second largest county in Ireland and one of the more, um, uh, I would say, rugged, desolate, sparsely populated. Uh, it's very, very beautiful, well worth a visit. 
Um, but the reason I mention it is because I suppose the big motivation in the early days of OpenStreetMap was with in a world where we didn't actually have um, good imagery except in isolated pockets of the country and usually those were ones that were close to major towns and cities. Um, it often took a long time before you could get any kind of a backbone for uh, the data in, in particular areas. And, you, in, again, in the early days of Ireland, the biggest challenge was the road network, so the major road network and completing it. So it was in a particular spot, sort of in the middle of the northwest of Donegal, which itself is in the northwest of the country, that I think the last piece of the national road network uh, came into place. And I, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about how it actually came to that point, because again, when, when you didn't have the imagery, it wasn't a matter of waiting until somebody has the time to go and trace that particular piece, because actually that will happen relatively quickly, um, because um, as we saw, so when Bing, for instance, released their, basically all of Western Europe um, at a level that you could actually trace, there was a, a huge upsurge and very quickly lots and lots of infill happened in Ireland and not all of that was even done by local Irish mappers but it was done in many cases by mappers from, in many cases Germany because Germany had been ahead of the curve in terms of doing ground truth mapping at home. So a lot of German mappers they had a very useful profile. On the one hand they'd become bored at home because there was nothing left to map and on the other hand many of them had enjoyed their, their trips to Ireland so they were motivated to help us out. So thanks guys. Um, but basically, at that time, if you didn't have the imagery, and if it wasn't a place that you'd actually had a chance to visit yourself with your GPS device, basically what you, it was a waiting game to see if somebody somewhere would have driven the route with the GPS device, would have uploaded the, the, the track log. Because there were many pe people who had GPS devices, wanted to help the map, knew how to upload a track log, but were intimidated from actually mapping them uh, themselves. And actually, I think there's still a little bit of that, only these days, not so much is done via track logs anymore, because you usually we have better sources. So I remember still, I can't remember exactly when it was, the edit history w w would show us if we cared enough. Um, I remember I would casually, you know, in those areas in the National Road Network when I, where I knew we had gaps, from time to time I would look to see if someone had uploaded a GPX trace. And it, one, one day I went in and, 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 and there it was, the missing piece. So, you know, an hour later the, the National Road Network was complete and we had a great sense of achievement. Still, if you zoomed in on the map at that place, it, it still looked hugely empty and unadventurous by today's standards. But what you have to understand is if you think about a mapper who is in that general vicinity, the piece where they would be able to say, here's my town or village, and there's nothing there, not even a road that shows how you can get close to it, that, that's very different to saying, okay, I see there is a map that comes near me, I can extend that and uh, to my village and you know so really you know the map gained an awful lot of momentum th uh, through actions like that so i was very very pleased and proud of that moment so again you're waiting for someone else to do the work or but then you're continuing it so it's it's this collaboration isn't it i, I will say that I, it's not that i was sitting at home waiting for for everyone else to do the gpx track slot track logs I, there's a reason why it was at the furthest extremity from where i actually live because i, I did actually end drive an awful lot of places myself in order to do the this kind of info <laughs> Um, probably it's my hometown, which is Edinburgh. Um, when I started, it was just a blank sheet. There was maybe two rows. There wasn't even a, a name node for the city in there. And I kind of, and I think at that point, I didn't have a GPS yet, but there was a couple of traces. So you kind of trying to work out. Well, I think that line there and that line there is probably that road. And I kind of just started building the city grid from there. And I, I've kind of reached the point where I suddenly realised that the first object thing I mapped, which was a roundabout in Edinburgh is about to get, is getting completely redeveloped. I was like, oh, that was my first thing in OpenStream map, but it's not going to be there anymore. Um, and we've kind of gone from there to just adding more and more, you know, from being ambitious about we just want the street names and that'll do. And then we're like, okay, we've got all the street names. Well, then start adding buildings and addresses and all the shops and all the pubs and all the bars and, you know, everything. Um, and it's kind of, it's interesting to see that journey. And actually, I think it's, it kind of hopefully, in the way that we were inspired by other cities and the detail that they had, hopefully um, the detail that we have will also inspire other people to see what's possible. Um, so that's me. Cool, thank you. Um, we've had some great conversations there. Um, very different stories. I mean, even 
different parts of your stories. You do different things, different things to inspire us. And it kind of, it's just a small look into the OpenStreetMap community. Um, so if you don't know many people at the conference, you can now come and talk to these people because you know some of their stories. You can ask them more about what they did or what they're doing. Um, but also hopefully it helps you um, know how diverse our, our interests are and our involvement. Um, and it might inspire you to talk to other people and ask other questions. Um, thank you very much, guys, for coming, especially at short notice. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Cool. Cheers. Mm.